All right. Hey, everybody. I want to welcome you to Business Insights, and it's episode number 53. And I cannot be more excited because I have someone on here that I have not only looked up to since I've gotten into the business, but has also been a an amazing role model, a great person to look up to for if you want to grow your business and, of course, also have some freedom in your life. And we're going to talk about ways that you can gain some freedom, ways that you can take control of your business. And Brian's going to share that with us. But first, let me cue that intro for you all here. And uh, I'm excited for this episode. It's going to be an amazing one. Here we go. Welcome to Business Insights with Matt Milia. I'm your host, Matt Milia. And in this podcast, we'll talk about the real, raw, uncut business success secrets you won't find anywhere else. Follow my journey from entry level to CEO. We discuss real actionable items you can plug into your business right away. To subscribe to our weekly top tips, you can go to www.mattpodcast.com and join our community of elite high-level performers. And if you're interested in our inside sales company, you can go to www.appointmentstoday.com to jump on a free strategy call. And now stay tuned for our podcast. All right. What's going on, everybody? So Brian, welcome on. I'm super pumped to have you. Thanks for jumping on. It's a privilege to be with you, Matt. It's been a while since I've seen you. Great to see you. You're looking good. Hey, that's that's Florida for you. So you know, trying to make sure that I uh, trying to make sure that I get out and get active as much as I can. So uh, having that big life change definitely helped a lot. <laughs> and it's great to. Uh, I actually just. I'm just going to put this confession out there for everybody. I am now officially become a Tom Brady fan. So I mean, you know, and I know with you being a Patriots. I know that one hurt, but at the end of the day, I mean, the guy is phenomenal. So I got to give him all the credit in the world. I was shocked to see him come here and just instantly win a Super Bowl. But uh, I feel like I have a Super Bowl champion on here right now with you, Brian. So uh, I'd love for you to kind of just share your story, tell everybody a little bit about how you got into uh, the real estate business and, uh, you know, just a little backstory on you. Uh, Well, Probably got into the real estate business for the same reason everybody else did, because real estate agents are rich. So <laughs> I thought, man, I want to be rich. Um, real estate would be a good vehicle to do that. Graduated from college. My parents were like, so this is great. We got one out of the nest. Uh, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to get into real estate. I'm going to get my license with Century 21. And um My dad scratched his head and said, you know, you don't need to go to college to be a realtor. And he spent his life savings to put me through school. So I didn't want to let him down, but I tried really, really hard. And I struggled for a few years till I finally figured what I was doing wasn't working. And I tried some different stuff and that worked really well. And then I never looked back. I love it. You said you struggled for a few years and I feel like the struggle I feel like the struggle is what defines us in our, and really it, it gives you that, it really shows what you're made of. It shows that you're going to be able to come out on the other side and you're going to be able to, if you can survive that, you can survive just about anything. Tell me a little bit about, there's one, there's one thing that I was fascinated by. I actually went to, I believe it was the Exponential Growth Summit. I want to say this was back in either 13 or 14. And I remember you were up on stage. You told an amazing story about how you had your, you, you wanted to, well, I won't take it away from you, but uh, you were very into uh, David Letterman and the show. You were a huge fan mm-hmm. and uh, share with everybody that a little bit about that and, uh, and, you know, seizing that opportunity. Well, um, so I'm a big believer in anything's possible. I believe that we live in the greatest country in the world. And I don't take it for granted. My dad was a World War II veteran. He stormed the beaches of Normandy. He was involved in the Battle of the Bulge, the liberation of Buchenwald. And not a day goes by, Matt, where I'm not grateful for the fact that I'm an American citizen and that there's opportunity in abundance in this country. And immigrants are four times more likely to become millionaires than our own citizens. And that's because they believe that it's possible. 
So I believe, because if you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. So to your to the story that you want me to share, I was driving to New York, and um, I was being coached by Tony Robbins through cassette tapes in the early 90s, who um, has been a great role model and mentor in my life. And now I've been through all of his programs, joined his platinum partnership, actually worked for Tony for three years, incredible experience. And uh, I just finished business mastery as a trainer supporting one of the teams. So I love his psychology and his environment. And Tony would always say, hey, if you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. So I'm being coached by cassettes and we're driving to New York. And one thing Tony always said is the quality of your questions is in direct proportion to the quality of your life. Said differently, if you ask better questions, you'll get better answers. You'll have a better quality of life. So he gave examples of you know, how can we make this experience even better than it already is? And the even better part, and you could do this in business, how can I make this year even better than it already is? Last year, we were in a pandemic. How can I make this year even better than it already is? You may be thinking, man, this year sucks. I'm getting screwed. Like, But even better presupposes that it's good. And the question once asked, lands in your subconscious and your subconscious works on overtime to find the answer. So long story to a short question, but I'm driving to New York with my buddy, Scott. I look at Scott and I said, how can we make this even better than it already is? He goes, Moses, shut up. We're going to Letterman. We're going to the Yankees game. We're going to dinner. We're in New York City. Three days, we're going to have an amazing experience. It doesn't get any better than this. I said, it can always be better. You're, it can always be better. Let's strive to, like, let's define what that is. He goes, I don't know. Want to go to a, a, a play on Broadway? I go, no, nah, I don't want to do that. I go, what if we got on the show with Dave Letterman? And Scott says, now, are you on drugs? Are you like crazy? You can't get on Letterman. How are you going to get on Letterman? I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to get on Letterman, but did you say I can't? And he's like, I didn't mean to offend you. Long story short, I managed to get on the show. You can go to YouTube for those who want to see it and have a good laugh. I got on the show. And people always ask, how'd you do it? And they're going to hate this answer, Matt. The how doesn't matter. You need to decide first. Decisions come first. The how comes after. Too many people, myself included, in the early years when I struggled, it was because I was trying to figure out how to sell real estate. I wasn't really clear on what I was trying to do with my life, what my outcomes were, what my goals were. Once you decide, you'll figure out the how. So that was a fun story. I was on the whole show. David made a mockery of me, and it, it was a good time. And I'm on his VIP list. And, you know, he's retired. But all those years following, anytime I was in New York, I had his personal assistance phone number, and I could get tickets to the show, and they took great care of me like I was, you know, a, a Hollywood movie star. They were really, really gracious. It was a wonderful experience. I thought – when I watched that, the one thing that really resonated with me was the fact that he gave you a test, which was to go out. I believe it was like a 30 yard field goal. Hell, I don't even know if I can kick the ball 30 yards. I haven't really ever tried, but I mean, the fact that you literally, I mean, it, it, I hate to take away the, it's funny. Yeah, they're going to watch it. They're gonna yeah. Watch it. I mean, but it was amazing. I mean, to watch you do that. And I mean, under all that pressure and you just, you know, you really rose to the occasion <laughs> And then I remember that there was an event, and I wasn't, I wasn't at this, but the Kentucky Derby, and somehow you got behind one of those lines, yet you always tend to figure out, even though it's, <laughs> some people deem it as impossible, I believe a lot of that is that positive self-talk and not allowing that word, you can't. Would you uh, mind expanding a little on that? Yeah, so this is the psychology that I've learned from Tony, and I've done a lot of amazing things, and people are like, how the hell did you do that? 
I don't, you know, it's not about figuring out the how. It's about making the decision. What would you like to do? So I'm at the Kentucky Derby. I go, I'd like to go to Billionaire's Row. Now, I'm not a billionaire, but I'd like to go there. And my friends are like, you can't. And when I hear that word, it just, I'm like, okay, I'll watch you. So um, I get into Billionaire's Row, and then I'm asking the question, how can I make it even better than that? Well, if I go to the present pre presentation of the roses, okay, the, the roses where they give, boy, that'd be great. So I do that. How, how could it be even better than that? Or if I could walk a horse onto the track, I did that too. So, you know, it was, um, here's the thing. When two people meet, and for our viewers that are in real estate, you can apply this to your business. When you meet a seller, two people meet. When you meet a buyer, two people meet. The person with the most degree of certainty always prevails. So how do I do these things? I act as if I belong there. Now, it doesn't work every time, just so people know. There's <laughs> failures in life, right? It, like it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be exciting or worth talking about if everybody could do it and if it happened all the time. But as I think Michael Jordan says, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So I take a lot of shots. I have a lot of failures. But people don't remember my failures. Who remembers the, the silver medalist in the Olympics versus Michael Phelps? Nobody remembers the failures. They remember right. the winners. So the Kentucky Derby was a gold medal performance. Billionaire's Row was gold medal. David Letterman was gold medal. And I've got dozens of them in my personal life. Um, we went to the national championship. I don't even know if you know this story. My son tore his ACL. It's after the game. I go, Hayden, shut up. Follow your dad. The person with the strong, most certainty. So – we wound up in the locker room with Joe Burrow from the LSU Tigers, the Heisman Trophy winner. He just won the national championship, and I get a picture with my kid. Nobody stopped us. Nobody asked us any questions. We wound up there and um, act as if you belong it is how it happens. Now, that's a little bold and boisterous, but how can that be applied to real estate? People are so afraid to fail. Jeez, I don't know if I want to call that person. I talked to them last week. They told me a month. But I don't know. I didn't feel good about that. I think that they're going to do something sooner. It smells like a rat to me. So you don't call them. You miss the shot you didn't take. You call them. He tells you to take a hike. And we're bruised. We're fragile. Um, I fail forward. Um. Michael Jordan, you know, one, it's on YouTube also. Great quote. The reason I succeed is because I've missed 9,000 shots in my life. I've taken the game-winning shot 23 times and missed. And the reason I'm successful is because I've failed. So I push for failure. People don't remember the failures. They remember you on stage when you're presented with the number one award or, you know, you're the person. They, nobody remembers the failures. I remember them. I remember them. I'm bruised. I've got bumps. I've got bruises. But that that's what I would offer people is to fail forward. And it's funny with the fail forward video because I've watched – there's a video that uh, – Denzel did uh, well it's his voice over it but that that is one of the most amazing videos you got to remake a video like that now I mean <laughs> that's that would be the way to go I love it there's there's so many obstacles right now that are happening just in in the industry itself and prior to us even getting on I was telling you about uh, how you know with our business and what we were doing how we had to really change course and look at becoming a different type of an entity that does more, not just cold calling, but lead generation and, and helping create those opportunities. 
where do you think in the marketplace right now in real estate, where do you think are some of the biggest opportunities that some agents may not know about or may not be taking full advantage of? Man, um, there are so many opportunities. We're, if we were pregnant, we'd be having like quadruplets. Um, there's so in this business, there's thousands of real estate agents in every market in North America. And most of them do the same things. And if you work harder at doing the same things as everybody else, you can only get incremental gains. Like if you cold sure. call more than the next person, you can, you, you can get better, but you'll only get incremental gains. The big sure. opportunity, as you said, is marketing, is differentiating yourself. Sellers, in, you know, we're in a low inventory market climate today. I can get sellers to call you like that with a marketing message. But people don't study marketing. They just do the traditional things. And I've just been blessed. I've always looked outside the box. Everybody who succeeded that I look up to at the highest level, they don't do what everybody else does. So marketing, direct response marketing versus promoting yourself is really the magic sauce. And if you could get five sellers to call you a week, which is easy to do, if you have more people who want to sell their home calling you, and your you, your offer is unique, different, compelling, you don't even have to answer the phone, Matt, and you can call them back when you want to call them back. So that's pretty different, right? Versus Very chase, different. chase, 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 chase. So let's have some compelling messaging so that the seller goes, geez, how does that work, Brian? We're thinking about selling our home. We've talked with a couple of realtors, but how does that work? How does that program work? Sell your home without listing it for sale? No signs, no open houses, really? Quick, easy, convenient? Tell me a little bit about that. Hey, Mr. Seller, it works phenomenally well. When can I see your house? Uh, you can come over anytime you want. Now I've got a listing appointment, folks. It's not difficult. So I've spent... For every... Go, oh, ahead. go ahead. I was, I was just saying, for, for everyone that's watching, though, Brian, you didn't, you didn't give that away when you were on that call. And I think that's what a lot of people do. Sometimes they over-explain something, and then you have... Uh, you have that paralysis by analysis. They get to a point where they start overthinking it. But when you're in front of them, it's Let me it's share a story with instant. you. So this year, I will have been married 25 years. When I, when I, thank you. When I, first met my, when I first met Janet, she was attractive. Like, it was a blind date. I'm like, wow, she's good looking. Um, it, the blind date didn't go really well. We had mutual friends. Somebody said, hey, she's special. You should go out with her again. I called her. She said no. Called her again. She said no. So persistence, tena being tenacious. So anyway, I got her to go out for a coffee or something. Uh, uh, something. But it, she, and when I went out, she, go, she said to me, I, I just got out of a relationship. I'm not looking to get into another one. If we, you want to be friends, we have mutual friends. I'd love to be friends. You can hang out. We can hang out. We can do things together in a group environment. But I don't want a relationship. That's like having a seller on the phone who's saying, you know what, we're, we're, we want to sell, but we're not ready to list it today. Mm -hmm. And you go and you ask all the questions. This would be analogous to me saying, well, how do you feel about getting married and having a couple of kids? She just told me she didn't want a relationship. So that would be way down the road. And real estate agents do that all the time. They vomit and let too much out of the bag. Let's do this in sequential steps. Step one, generate the lead. Qualify the lead. Go on the appointment. Transition into a listing presentation. Walk out with the listing. It's, it's similar to this. People can understand, hey, a buyer calls you on a listing that you have. We've all had signed calls. And they say, how many bedrooms does that house have? And you say, it's got three. Buyer says, damn, I need four. You don't say, all right, see you later. 
You right. go, I can show you four bedroom homes. Would you like to receive a free list of all of the four bedroom homes in your market? And we have a more advanced, juicy, sexy script than that. But, um, and, and we have some training here that I see is that we want to, we want to add value to you. So if you go to 90dayroadmap.com forward slash letter, we'll give you a, a training on how to generate leads, how to convert those leads, and we'll give you a letter that kicks ass. But we convert the prospect by giving them what they want. So I hook a prospect by giving them what they think they want, and then I get the listing by exceeding their expectations and giving them what they really want, not what they thought they want. A lot of buyers and sellers think they know what they want. How many times have we had a call from a buyer? Hi, I'd like to see this house. And we go, okay, and we run out and show it. And they look at the house and they don't buy the house. They don't like the house. And you just wasted their time, your time, but we think that we did something good because we got in front of the prospect. So here's my business card. Can I give you my business card? And uh, we're chasing. So I don't so like true. to chase. I'm very strategic. I work on my business. Um, reminds me of a great quote by Abraham Lincoln. If I had six hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend five sharpening my ax. And that tree would go down so much easier. So my whole life, I've worked on sharpening my ax. What do I say to get the sellers to call? What do I say to get the appointment? What do I say to set myself up for success? I create a system, a process. And then, you know what, Matt? It's duplicatable. Other agents can follow that process and get the same results. And that's how I built my team and got out of production selling 400 homes a year where I never went on an appointment. Getting out of production is always the it's always one of the biggest obstacles that the business owner is looking for and even for me with an inside sales company i love being the person that talks to them on the phone and solves the problem but the challenge with that is there's only so many hours that we all have in the day so that delegation and letting go of the vine and saying hey someone else can do this and I have other people that I have that do it. I like. I still like to take leads on. The goal would be to delegate that off. For you in your business, when did you feel was the right time to start delegating? Because you've accomplished so much as in the real estate sector. When did you feel was the time where you could say, you know what, now is the time for me to give this to people that I'm that I have on my team, other individuals. When I was becoming a lead generation machine when I could generate leads like turning on a water spigot. And um, then I would cherry pick the leads, right? So I would generate, let's say a hundred leads in a month. And mm -hmm. I would I listen to this. No, no other trainer coach would ever tell you this. And I didn't even call half the leads. I called the best 50 leads based on geography, price point, motivation, so I had a strategic advantage over other people because I was working with the golden goose. The mm -hmm. only people I worked with were highly motivated, ready to go, highly qualified, good price points. So then I'm like, oh, this isn't very smart. I'm generating these leads, but half of them I'm not even getting to. So then I built, I hired a buyer's agent, a second buyer's agent, a third buyer's agent. And I just did listings. So I was out of the buyer production, had an administrative assistant. And then with the revenues that were generated by my or my, my little team, I would reinvest those, rep, those revenues for compounded returns, hire more people. We got up to six full-time administrators and everyone had a job description that produced profit for the company. It wasn't just hire somebody to write ads and post ads and do marketing. They right. did that, but they also did other things that made us our company money. I love that. And you had a, I believe, was it Wally? I, I, I know you had you had an inside sales rep, and I mean Wally's phenomenal on the phone. He's he's amazing. 
and you spent the time to train him, invest in him as well. When did you go from, when did you actually hire an inside sales rep or was it always where you trained your agents? What was the process for that? So for me, I could never really crack the code on an inside sales rep. That position is almost like a unicorn. To find a superstar, it's really hard. Somebody who's just going to crank it out on the phone and kick ass. What I found, though, is that my outside sales agents, with, with my script and my offers, if I trained them, and they were tasked with minimal responsibilities. They didn't have to generate leads. They had to call the leads, book the appointments, sign them up to a buyer agreement, get them pre-approved, follow our process with our lender, show them property, follow our process to influence them to go under agreement. I mean, we never experienced a market like today where buyers are like, okay, let's take it. Let's offer 50 grand over asking price. And that sometimes isn't enough today. So we had our outside salespeople be our inside salespeople too, the way that it worked. And I've got some great stories. Wally was a good one. Wally came to my house. He was a friend of my wife, Janet's. And he said, um, you know, here it is. It's a Wednesday afternoon. It's the middle of the work week. And you're home at your property, like just relaxing. I'm like, yeah, I went in for a few hours this morning and I had some stuff that I wanted to do and, you know, just chill out and think. And he's like, well, I want a life like that. I said, well, I'll teach it to you. So what? Well, but but I had standards of performance. And anybody who hires hires anybody, we've all made the mistake of hiring the wrong person. And that sucks, right? Like sucks yeah. really bad. So I don't want to make that mistake again. So I created minimum standards. What are the things that drive you crazy? If you're running a team, there are, I have little pet peeves. I'm far from perfect. I have idiosyncrasies. I have high standards. I have big expectations of myself and others. So if we're having a team training at Tuesday at 9 o'clock, my standards are higher than an average realtor. On time is early. 9 o'clock, you're late. 9.15, I'm not letting you into my training. And you're going to be put on ice for a week and get no leads. How's that? So, like, respect people's time. I'm not, like, you and I, you said, hey, we're going to start today. I got here. You were here. Boom. It works nicely when everybody's on the same page. When you're working with people who have standards. I don't have this loosey-goosey attitude. I work hard and I play hard. So I have standards of performance. When I'm recruiting... I don't sell myself and my company. In fact, I paint a picture of the worst day in the life of Brian's organization. This is what it's like here. It's crazy. Deals are falling apart. People are running around with their hair on fire. You can't get to our transaction manager because she's got 40 deals in escrow and you got to wait. So are you okay with all that? Yeah, I don't have a transaction manager where I'm at. I like your structure. I like your training. So um, the, okay, the next step is you need to be full time. What's your schedule? What are your hours? I want you to take time off. But if you tell me that this is your schedule, I expect you to be working during those hours. That's how we built a world-class organization. uh, One of the best teams in the world. I love that you talked about setting the standards and minimum standards. You used to go out and show houses all weekend long, right, Brian? Yeah, in the early days. In the early days, I did. But but after a while, you started to set those standards. Yeah, I'm not playing this game anymore. You know, where buyers would use you. They tell you they're, oh, yeah, yeah, we're ready to go. Um, You find us a house, we'll buy it. And then they don't show up. Um, oh, yeah. We created processes. I'm not even in today's market. Let me, get, you know, for those of you that are, we talked about sellers and how easy it is to attract sellers. You get a seller today, it's going to sell in a day with 30 offers. But what about the agents that are working with buyers? I had a coaching call with someone today, and they said that there were 30 offers on a property that they, and they were one of them. 
And I, they said, what can I do? I said, well, what are you doing? And they said, you know, we're offering $500 over the best verifiable offer. We're offering $500, $1,000 over appraisal. I go, how many offers have you written this month? 15. 15. How many were accepted? Four. I go, I don't like, first of all, what you're doing isn't working, so stop it. Right? $500, $1,000 isn't enough over a verifiable offer. Make your offer the most, the best verifiable offer. Manage your buyer's expectations. But I said, why even play in that arena? So there, that price point was about four hundred thousand. I said, "What if you go up two hundred thousand to six hundred thousand? How many offers are on a property that is six hundred thousand? They go probably ten. Still really competitive." I said, "What if we went up to seven fifty and above? They go maybe three offers on a property." I said, "I don't know about you, but I like those odds better, and better. I like the income better on a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar home versus a four hundred thousand dollar home." Well, Brian, how do you do that? We stop running bait or marketing to four hundred thousand dollar buyers, and we use bait that attracts seven, eight hundred thousand dollar buyers, million dollar buyers, and you increase your chances for success. The quality of the buyer is better. They have a better job. They have better income. They have better credit scores. I'm not telling anybody listening anything that they don't know or don't believe they just are so busy doing it doing it doing it that if they would stop step back sharpen their axe and go you know what why don't i run a campaign to get some seven eight hundred thousand dollar buyers and that's easy and that's like shooting fish in a barrel so you can significantly and dramatically increase your average sales price increase your income Cut the number of deals you have to do in a third or by a half. Work less, make more money. That's my philosophy. I can make more money, but at the expense of what? I don't want. I don't want to give up my kids' football games, their karate tournaments, their robotics competitions at school. I want to be a full, fully present husband, father, dad. And if you follow me on social media. You and you looked at me, you wouldn't even on my personal page, you wouldn't even really know that I'd, I'm a real estate coach or trainer. You'd know that I'm a husband and a dad. So true. It's so true. And, and but and, and that's all to your credit. You brand yourself. It, you're no different in in your personal life than you are in business. And I feel like that's one of the most genuine things about you is that you put your family first. People respect that. They see it. And that's why I was bringing up to the, the comment about the weekend you were setting. I remember the one thing that resonated the most with me, everyone's wanting you to go run all these appointments on the weekend. At one point, you're like, hey, listen, I, I've got this going on. I got this. These are things that are non-negotiables. And you set your non-negotiables. Well, in that's all true in practice. That's not what I say to the buyer, though. What I right. say, What I say to the buyer is this. Hey, is getting a good deal important to you? Yeah. Guess when guess when everybody's looking at these properties? Guess when everybody yeah. else is looking on this at uh, these properties on the weekend. Yeah. So why don't we go on Thursday or Wednesday? Because the best way to get a good deal if that's important to you is to see the property before other people see see the property. It's huge. And then Throw they go, this, yeah. It's huge. Yeah, and then they go, uh, okay, that sounds good. And and you're set and you're setting the the proper expectations without saying, "Hey, I have other commitments," which is uh, that's awesome. For everyone that is tuning in, uh, 90dayroadmap.com forward slash letter. Everything that and Brian, a lot of the marketing and a lot of the tools, the tactics, the things that you're doing. I mean, you've built your business up from marketing, from branding yourself. And I do want to ask about the whole correlation between what you have going on in, in, uh, in Tony Robbins. And I'll never forget, I was watching, this was random. I was watching, <laughs> I am not your guru. 
And I'm like, I'm like, everyone's talking about this. Watch this. I turn this on and all of a sudden I see you in the back and like you were actually talking and I go, oh my God, that's Brian. Uh, that was so cool to see. How did you get into Tony's coaching group? I mean, what, what brought you there? Well, I had learned early on that you become a product of your environment. Tony's obviously had great success in business. He has great skills in managing the mental gymnastics, your psychology. We all have limiting beliefs. We have that drunk monkey voice in our head that tells us we can't do things. And then yeah. we have the good voice that says, you know what? Don't listen to that voice. So I've worked on training my psychology to be positive, to be, um, you know, to, to not limit myself, to not, you know, to make decisions and, not worry about how or not being afraid of failure. And um, I just would go, for, I went to one event and then I went to another event, went to another event. Before you know it, I'm all in. I'm traveling the world in his platinum program. I bought the whole enchilada. It was the biggest check I ever written and um, did his leadership mastery program. Leadership is a skill. Lead generation is a skill. Management is a skill. Conversion is a skill. Influence is a skill. And skills are so important. My son's going to play football in college. The coach didn't pick him because he was motivated. But I used to think, and most people think, that motivation is more important than skill. Hey, don't take offense to this, people watching, but there are a lot of motivated idiots out there. There are a lot of people running around – a hundred miles an hour. I'm going to kick ass today. Yeah. What are you going to do? Uh, I don't know yet, but I'll, I'll figure it out. Skills. So my whole life I worked on those skills. And when you acquire the skills, you don't even have to be motivated. Like I'm going to be 55 this year. I'm getting old. My hair's thinning. I'm going bald. I'm getting gray. And, um, but I can print money. I know how to generate leads. I know how to convert those leads. So skills trump motivation. And if you're not convinced or you're still skeptical, if you were going to go skydiving, do you want the guide to be skilled or motivated? I've never done this before, but this should be fun. I think we pulled the shoot. When do we pull the shoot? I watched a YouTube video on how to do it. So we should be good. I'm really motivated to make this work for yeah, you. Yeah, Your car breaks down. Do you try to fix it? Take the engine apart or you to bring it to a mechanic? Real bring estate. Mechanic. We, we have a lot of people in our industry. So you want to talk about opportunity? You don't have to be skilled to the level of the best in the world. But if you ever go to a convention or you see somebody getting an award and they're in the top 10 worldwide for a franchise, a major corporation, they've got skills. They know how to generate leads. They know how to convert leads. They know how to manage a team. They've, they, and they weren't born with those skills. Just like we're not born knowing how to tie our shoes, knowing how to swim, knowing how to drive a car. Those are skills. And we acquired those skills. So we can learn these skills. The secret, the biggest opportunity is acquire the skills of direct response marketing. Acquire the skills of influence to be an effective communicator. And you will crush your competition. So that's that was kind of my journey through Tony. He hasn't let me down. Um, I'm still hooked to his hip. We just finished Business Mastery this week. It was incredible. I'm always learning. He says that if you're not growing, you're dying. And it's a choice. So true. You you have the choice to grow or you have the choice to die. Yep. And that's and that's where I think a lot of people are stuck in their own way where well, this is how we've always done it, or this is how we're oh well, we've always done it this way. We're used to doing it this way. You diversify or die. And you've got to figure out what is the next way to sharpen your blade and and just increase your skill set. So Brian, we could talk all day and I, but I want to be respectful of your time. I am very thankful that you jumped on, gave some amazing, really some great actionable items that things people can do. And if there were, if there was just one thing that you wanted to leave 
let's say you're a brand new agent, you're just getting into the marketplace. What's one thing that you would uh, recommend a, a skill that they should learn? Um, so there's a couple of things, calendaring, book, managing your schedule and being disciplined yep. to identify the dollar productive activities in your business learn those skills, lead generation, lead conversion. When are you making your calls? When are you going on appointments? Dream big, dream big. Know that you can do anything you set your mind to. Don't worry about how you're going to do it. Just make the decision to do it. So manage your schedule. Um, and we offered some free training if people like what they hear today. I don't want anything in return. We want to add value because there's, frankly, thousands, hundreds of, hundreds of, coaches in the real estate industry. And many of them have never sold real estate. And they're well intended. And they say, make more calls. Gang, I don't want you making more calls. I want you to talk to fewer people, the right people, and have a quality of your life so that you can live a life that most people dream about. You can go to your children's soccer, football, hockey games. You can take off with your partner, your significant other, and you're not at the beck and call of the general public. So if you like that, go to 90dayroadmap.com forward slash letter, try that lead magnet, watch our webinar. It's a 45 minute training that's very specific, strategic and tactical. And Matt, I appreciate you having me here. It's great to catch up with you after you know what seems like uh, many, many, many years, but I remember you like yesterday and it a lot of great memories seeing you again. So thanks for having me on your show. Absolutely. Same here, Brian. And guys, for everyone watching, check out his uh, check out the website. You're not going to go wrong. Brian uh, gives some amazing tactics and really actionable items from somebody that, I, that, is, that has sold real estate, that coaches people in real estate and knows the industry inside and out. So Brian, thank you again. And uh, for everyone tuning in, we'll see you guys same place, same time next week. Thanks again, Brian. Thanks, Matt.